Hello everyone, welcome to the r slash Indie Heads podcast. I am your host, Matty, aka Recon G. On this week's podcast, we have... Oh, it's me, right? Okay. Um, I'm Rainy, aka Star Wolfers on Reddit. <laughs> I can't. This is, this is Ted, aka Dank Dad Burrito on Reddit. I think your name's actually Defiant Baku. Actually, no, he had to change actually, it. I, I, I had to sorry. change story. it for reasons which are no long story. It. Don't even. I know the story. Don't even. I, I wrote okay, in the well, story. Well, my name is Jeremiah. Say? I'm Kill Trap. I'm making my grand return after like months of not being on the podcast. Months. Yeah. Of course, the first yeah. thing we're going to talk about is Pom Pom. So, see, Pom. Right. so Ted and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pronounce it wrong. Can you do it one more time for me, please? It's Rainy. <laughs> Rainy, okay. They oh are God. from the Slack chat. They have recently <laughs> yeah. joined the podcast. Josiah is also it's from the, of the Slack chat. We're hopefully getting, we're you know, we're getting a bond. Okay, we are. Yeah. This is this is like. I don't know. Is that is, is that is that relevant information? Somewhere. Yeah, this it is. is like. Does it matter? Does it matter where they come from? This is from? like when Nixon open relationships. The families are with, bonding. Hold on, who's like, what, what's like a really important like country agreement where like they work Nixon things out? Nixon went to China. Cuba. Cuba. What you, yeah. you were talking about talking about when Nixon went to China. Yeah, I was gonna say that Nixon went to China. China. So who's the communist man in this picture? Of course, we have not open relationships with the plug DJ crew yet because they're a bunch of assholes and then go. Plug DJ himself. crew is chill. I mean, I haven't talked to the plug, plug DJ crew. What since about like the book February, club? But I know what Meme Safari's in there, and I'm a big fan of Meme Safari. Like we used to have a beef. We had a beef at one point, and then like it just randomly got squashed. Like he was just like, so I heard you got beef with me. I was like, you're right, but I'm in, I'm in the wrong. Very good guy, Moon Safari. And we're like, yeah, and so we're just friends again. Now everyone's like, death to Moon Safari. But I'm like, guys, Moon Safari is the man. I don't see a problem here. Although his train posts are really weird. Yeah. But he stopped. Train those, so it's okay. posts. Oh god, we're gonna get. See, someone's gonna tell. Someone's gonna tell him that we're talking about. Him. No, don't tell me the story. I'll Wait, figure it out later. You don't know how long have you been on the sub? <laughs> Have you missed, uh, like, the, uh, uh, general discussion, the general discussion threads from, like, you never a, go in this. two months ago? I, I don't do general discussions that often. What's wrong with you? I, I'm, I'm just not that... I always miss timings on posts like do you, that. Do you, do you, okay, do you check out the best ofs every month that I post? Uh, I think so. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, where, that's yeah. where, like, half yeah, of my material comes from, is from the general discussion threads. Wait, oh, we're yeah, talking that's... about the trains. Are we really talking about the best of threads in the podcast right now? Okay, anyways, yeah, let's stop. go into what we've been listening to this week. <laughs> I'll start off. I listened to a couple albums and other things this week. Uh, first things first, uh, I didn't post it on the, in the schedule, but shout out to the track Maria I'm Drunk off of Rodeo. Holy shit, that track is amazing. I love it. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, Split. first album, Ariel Pink. Pom, album, of year. <laughs> album of the year. Album of the year. Album of the year. Yep. <laughs> album of the year. <laughs> yeah. This this was Jeremiah's favorite album last year. I get. I decided. I decided to put it on because I put Dinosaur Care Bears on a playlist I made, and I was like, "Wow, this track's a fucking banger." Besides, right? the, besides like the second part, which is like clown music, yeah. and it's fucking weird. The rest of the track's a fucking banger and like you intense and, and shit. Dad, wait, guys. I think my dad is actually like not upstairs anymore, so I'm gonna go yeah. on mute for a sec. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, oh Errol Pink Pum Pum. This is a very good. This is a very good uh, art pop lo-fi pop album. Uh, the production is incredible throughout. There's a lot of variety. Errol Pink. Ridiculous. Errol Pink. Who is the guy who helped write like half the songs on here? Um, who died? the guy who died. Uh, Kim something. Yeah, whatever his name is. These are really well-written pop songs. Like these are fun. This is a fun album to listen to. It's just. It's just ridiculous. It's just absurd. It is mind-boggling, and I, I despised it. And then I loved it. I, it's just like the best story of my life with this album. I, I know that feeling of like just despising that one. Yeah, like every like, wow. song in this album is amazing. Yeah, like, oh, what, what's, what's your favorite? Yeah, on the album. Oh, there's so many good ones. If I had to pick one, if I had to pick one, okay, hold on. I'm going to pick them by sides because I have this on vinyl and the side splitting is actually really good. So the first side is definitely Not Enough Violence. I fucking love that song. <laughs> But at last, not enough All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> God dang it, I didn't get to in time. So, fertilizer's the shit. Um, and then on the second half, I'd say probably, probably put your number in my phone. Because that song is just catchy. And then I really, 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 of course, Sexual Athletics was one of my absolute favorite songs from last year. 
And everyone's like, sex with athletics, that's always so dumb. But it's also like fucking amazing. Because at the first part, it's like, we do the walk. Oh, yeah, let's do the walk. Give me a mess. <laughs> You I was just gonna say, I'm looking, I'm looking at it right now. These what song kind of titles. What are you talking about? This time that we scream and shout. Let's go to the emotion. Anyways, there's that part, right? I fucking right? regret putting like, this on the goddamn list. Jesus you're like, Christ. You're like, Ariel Pink, you're insane. Quit talking about You've sex. You've made a huge mistake. Man. I don't know if you realize that. Right? But okay, then here's the thing. You're my You said you made a huge mistake, Maddie. Oh my god. Oh my god. Come on, guys. Let me finish my sexual athletics rant, and then halfway no. through, it just breaks, and it's like the most nice thing. And you're like, "Oh my God, Ariel Pink, give me a It's hug. wonderful. It's beautiful. That song is amazing. Ask Arthy about it too. And then, and then the last song, "Dazed and Daydreams," is fucking gives me chills, dude. But, oh my God. All right, so that's pop okay. Pop I along. just can I talk about Ariel Pink and how much I don't like him? Oh I don't, no. No. Oh God. It's it's not just him. It's just I can't. I I don't. Like, I feel like I would like Pom Pom, but it's just, like, it hasn't, like, clicked. I just, I really don't know. Do it. It's one, I have once a weird relationship. Bomb, once you get Goth Bomb and Nude Beach of Go-Go stuck in your head, that's when that's when you fall in love with the album. Because, like, those songs are so fucking stupid, and you're just like, what the fuck? Like, why are you fucking making these dumb songs? Like, fuck you, Ariel Pink. And you're like, Nude Beach of Go-Go, Nude Beach of Go-Go. And you're just like, oh, oh my boy. god. And then I can't wait to talk about my album in particular. Because I have a similar case here. Okay, anyways, back to me because this is my album that I chose. Oh, wait, but Black Ballad well, yeah, is the only good track. Really. Okay, what? anyways, yes, the sound was very good. I do like Not Enough Violence. That's really great. Uh, Dinosaur Care Bears is a great track, except for the mm-hmm. second half, the second part, which is oh, kind of weird. The second half, that's what makes it great, though. The second part, it's like, it's off. like, no, no, Dinosaur Care it's fucking intense in the beginning. It's like, it's like, and then it's like, it's like, it's like this guy speaking like some, I don't, he's speaking gibberish as far as I know, but it sounds fucking cool and intense. And it goes to like fucking cloud music. It's like, yeah, you're just like, what the hell, man? What the hell is this? And then it gets into like this sort of like, you're no good. You're no good. You're no good. Yeah, it's fucking, yeah, that track's great. Save me. And another great track is, uh. So good. Black Ball Arena, which I can personally oh. relate to because yeah, ex- Black Ball Arena is the only one I Don't like because my ex girlfriend is a uh, former ballerina and she's also I like black. Your areolas, <laughs> baby. <laughs> okay. Anyways, next onto the next album EP. It's easily my favorite song about strippers. Yeah, it's an EP. Okay. Anyways, F- the next thing I'm gonna talk about is FK Twigs, <laughs> Melissa. Holy shit! This yes. Is, this is this is the best thing she's done so far. Mm, we, 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 oh. Can we do oh, that? So no, that, no, no. that's what that title is. Yeah, I'm he, still, he I'm still the... LP1. Once I really got around to listening to LP1, I was like, God damn it. Why did I call this the most I, favorite album of 2015? I still have not come around to LP1. I'm going to be it's honest. Really like, LP1's actually my second favorite of last year. Like I think it's so. in my top four. I've tried. I have tried. Okay, anyways, Melissa, holy shit. This is, okay, by, by far, this is EP of the year. By far. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's been a couple of I don't of know. EPs I'm, I'm going to have to defend. Dude, what about T.I.'s new EP? I, oh, yeah, I forgot. Jeremiah is a secret T.I. stan. That's where his name comes I from. I am a T.I. stan. I'm an open Mike Eagle stan, and I will gladly defend his EP this year. Okay, but... I like okay. Death Grips. <laughs> Death Grips? They didn't put on EP this year. <laughs> I know, but just... I don't know. Okay, look, I, well, I would love to talk about did. Death Grips, but I did not bring him up. But I don't have the time because I'll, I would go on too long. But anyways, Melissa, holy shit, yeah. this EP is fucking incredible. Uh, every track is just like, how does she do it? How does she keep getting better? Because, like, her standards are already super high, and they just keep increasing. And it's like, what? You you have a track, you have tracks, like, in time, and you're like, what the fuck? I be doing you right when I'm holding you down to be picking a fight. You got a goddamn nerve. You got a goddamn nerve. It's fucking incredible. And then, you know, you have tricks. I'm your doll, and it's like, she wrote this when she was 18? What? And she's been saving it for that long for us? Uh, but yes, the CP is incredible. I love it. Go listen to it. It's the best thing she's ever done. Mm-hmm. Like, if she, if she keeps getting better, I don't I don't know what I'm going to do. I think, you know, I'm, I'm, am I just going to have to exclusively listen to FK Twix music then if she just keeps getting better? It yeah, seems like it's gonna, that's gonna happen. Do it. Do the enterprise in a music. But yes, yeah, FK Twigs, this EP is incredible. Go listen. It's it, it's the name of it is M three L L one five five X, but it's pronounced Melissa. 
So yeah, go check this out. It's amazing. It's the EP of the year by a large margin. Um, but I thought Thundercats EP was good, and I thought Panda Bear's EP was good, but this is on a different level entirely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What'd you listen to? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I oh wonder. Oh, God. <laughs> Stop. Okay. So um, if you've been looking at this sub, you know that literally all week I've been re-listening to Untitled by Sia Ross. Um, <laughs> you, can, you can just read the FYC, basically. But um, yeah, this is, I mean, okay, this is my favorite album of all time. So, I mean, Untitled is like second to that. And usually when I, like, rank, like, favorite albums ever, I just, like, keep it to, like, one album per band. But really, like, my top three, technically, it's, like, Agaitis, Untitled, Talk, and then, like, everything else. Like, honestly, that's, yeah, but Untitled. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good I job. Can't. Yeah. I, I, honestly, I just read the FYC. I can't believe I did that in like three days. It's still like. No, thank you. You, you, you definitely, you know, you, you picked up the slack, Arthy. I, yeah, really. Come on, Arthy. Arthy. I gave you months in advance to get that goddamn FYC done. I well, figured you yeah, in advance. Stop, stop shit too. talking, Arthy. I'm sorry, Arthy, but. But yeah, I'm, I'm slightly disappointed. Arthi's a beautiful human being. I'm disappointed. Yeah, I'm disappointed in anyone funny. who doesn't turn their FYC. I get you mad. guys were like, six I'm, I'm just going to take a moment to brag that I turned mine in already. I know, thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay, what kind of Arthi did you guys do? This, 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 oh, wait. Oh, wait, can I, can I also just briefly mention to everybody that I accidentally won a signed Zero's final this week? I just want to put that out there. That was my big news of the week. But anyways, okay. Um, And then also, I really didn't listen to anything this week. I really don't have a lot of material. But I listened to um, uh, Halkion Digest. I don't know how do you... Halcyon. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremiah. Um, Fave album. My Deer Hunter. Um, Mm. Yeah, I listened to that that for the first time this week. And, Mm. yeah. Can I talk about it? I like like this album. You probably, I've, I've you listened to. I think I actually cool. listened to Halcyon Digest like three times this week. But that's like a. I love that album a lot. It's really I good. Put, it was good. It was good. It's like. After, rap, uh, I just want to talk about how good Desire Lines is. It's really good. So that's Locket yeah. Punch. Like, is, and I love Locket Punch songs because they're all like melodic. There's like a, they're really swirly melodically. Like Desire Lines like, is so swirly. Just like after I put on <laughs> Fading Frontier, I was just like, I need to listen to Halcyon Digest again. And then I did. I was like. Oh, now I remember why I like Coronado so much. That is my Coronado's favorite. Coronado's the jam. Coronado makes me shimmy my shoulders. And also <laughs> Helicopter. Oh my god. Helicopter that, makes me cry. The backstory to Helicopter. Like, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I, I read about that even before I listened to the album. And I'm like, oh, wow, thanks. Okay, how did you find this one, Bradford? Tell me. What? Well, because the, yeah. the, guy, the guy who wrote the obituary is a really famous uh, gay writer and he does a lot of gay like like novels and stuff and so he does an obituaries thing where he talks about people who got fucked over for being gay and that was and uh dimitri dima i actually have a friend named dima but dima the gay porn star who got abducted by the mob and then gang raped a lot and used as a sex slave and then thrown out of a helicopter that story connected with bradford and so helicopter exists anyways that album is really good it's really cool because it's like it just it's just so like it's just a it's like a oh it's gorgeous oh it's gorgeous the yeah. lo-fi sounds so cool. mm, it's yeah. just so pristine he would like there's so much like prettiness and it's just so pretty and it's just so nice and it just makes me feel good but it's also like a perfect like lonely album because it's like melancholy it's got like the perfect the amount sailing of just, perfectly like, describes that feeling it's like pop is peppy but it's also like you know this is a good album for being alone like just driving riding oh it's good I love it I love yeah, it I need, yeah like, I need to. I need to the listen MTS. to it more. I also like, also like the fact that the songs, it's like the structure, it's a, it has a symmetrical structure. So the first song is a slow, long song. The next two songs are short pop songs. The fourth song is a slow, long song. The fifth song is a short pop song. The middle song is Desire Lines, which is the longest and like neat and like fast. Actually, wrong. He would have laughed as longest. Sorry. Oh, is it? Well, oh, okay. yeah, it is. Lines I've got it up right now. Desire Lines is the centerpiece. That's not the point. That's not the point I was making. 
Anyways, yeah. Desire Lines is the same yeah. piece. So it's just it's a long song right in the middle. Then you have short song, you have or a short poppy song, you have well kind of poppy basement scene, and then you have a longer, slower song in helicopter, and then you got two top songs, and you got the long, slow closer. He would have laughed, by the way, is one of the best closers. Yeah, that is yeah, that is yeah. And then mm. sailing is a good track. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I'm a mess tonight. I really I went through a lot tonight. Also, it's... Arthi has a rebuttal for you guys. Oh, God. What? She said, sorry, sorry I couldn't write an indie album review. I was doing research all summer. Jesus Christ, can I live? Yeah, fuck you guys. I'm anyway. sorry, okay? Arthi... We're terrible people. Yeah, because Arthi was fucking working her ass off for this internship. Okay, then, guys... then, she should, then she should have told me before saying, like, hey, I can't also, do this. We all know that her write-up would have been, like, like sticks and like it just would have been like interpretive art like like her her write-up would have been like a picture she drew wait what's in the first spirit they've gone or whatever it's really yeah long term they got, they got delayed to like next year in august my singing voice is gone okay God, ted what you listen to buddy Okay, well, this week I did as every week foxygen's take the kids off broadway Oh, it's this wonderful retro revival sound, which really I don't think they've done with any of their other albums as well as they have on this one. It's a very short album, almost EP length. It's got these songs which will take a sound and then just end on something completely different. And so I think my favorite on here is not Teenage Alien Blues like everyone else loves. It's Middle School Dance. Anyway, yeah, and then you... oh no, I was just gonna say you talk about this album like every week on the Slack chat, and I'm just like, yes. okay, yeah, because people need to listen to it. <laughs> I I really do need to listen to it. All honestly. I know about Fuction is that their early stuff was good, and that In Star Power is a fucking terrible album. It's not a bad. Time. <laughs> That's all I know because I I watched Fantano's uh In Star Power review the other day, and I was like. Holy shit! Like he sounds, le- he sounds legitimately angry. Probably like, because he, he really, really loved the first two. Like, I know it's like he, like you can you could hear it in his tone. Like he is fucking pissed off. Could, like in the Miley Cyrus review, he didn't sound pissed off. He's just like, okay, I get it. Yeah, Miley review Fox, almost like, felt like a joke review. But yeah, but in 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 the Fox, he's like he's legitimately mad. It's like Jesus Christ, man. Uh. But yeah, I, I I've been I haven't listened. I think I listened to it like once, but I don't remember anything about it because it was years ago. Yeah, it's good. Just okay. And then the other one I listened to this week was on the recommendation of a friend. It was called "It's Get to Heaven" by Everything Everything, and "Distant Past" has been stuck in my head for days now. Didn't I do that? Distant past. It's wonderful, and some other good stuff on there is President Heartbeat, Fortune 500, Spring Sun, Winter Dread. Pretty good pop stuff. Very catchy. Yeah. I saw it on the the, the Google Doc, and I'm like, oh, I should probably listen to this because I wanted to listen to it, but it's not on Apple Music, so I didn't listen to it. <laughs> Music. I, I'm sorry. <sighs> Am I the only one who's not going to sing on this podcast tonight? I guess. And, okay. I'm fine with that. I mean, I, I don't really it's feel a, it's like... It's a title sing- to be proud of. Yeah, I don't really feel like singing Super well, tonight, singing especially if there's no lyrics. Well, you have to... Well, okay. All right, anyway. I'll sing Trap Queen if you want. Yeah, my album. What you listen to? I... So, story time, because this directly relates to the first album. Um, <laughs> me and my sweet mate, we were like, yo, or we were driving people, anyways, there was some driving stuff. Anyway, so we go to this GameStop, right, in near our town, and we're like, we're trying to get Dokopan Kingdom. I don't know if you guys have played Dokopan Kingdom, but that game oh. is amazing. Anyways, it's, so it's like $100 online, so we need to get it at a GameStop. And the GameStop we go to, they don't have it, but the GameStop, like, 30 minutes away has it. And we're like, alright, let's do it. Anyways, so my friend's car, it just has a CD player, no aux, no, and the radio's shitty. So that means we're listening to the radio, just like, oh, it's awful. And so he doesn't really listen to much music, or he's like, he's not like the most like broad musical taste. He likes classic rock, you know. He likes stuff, but he doesn't really like dabble. And so we drive out to this GameStop, and we see a Best Buy. We stop in the Best Buy, and we're looking around the CDs, and we're like, 
And I was like, all right, hip hop or indie? Because I had like Father John Misty in my hand, and he was like, I want hip hop. And I was like, all right, good choice. So I put down Father John Misty, and I grabbed Good Kid, Mad City. And so mm-hmm. we bumped yes. Good Kid, Mad City on the way home. And so now this album has been making its rounds around the <laughs> around my sweet <laughs> CD. Oh. It's like it just feels like it feels like it's 2005. Like we bust the package off. We're like, oh my god, this mm. is so exciting. We slid it into his car, and then the the first sec- oh my god. Anyway, so this album is obviously amazing. Um, yeah, not much this, to say yeah. there. Is really Money, 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 Money Trees. Money Trees is my favorite. I love the. Oh my god, yeah. Money Trees! Stop. That's still my favorite. Money yeah. Actually, no, I'm wrong. That that would be my favorite. But... Controversial be... opinion about Good Dollar Kid, Mad City. Hold on, guys. That's just how I feel. Oh, Stop singing real quick. Stop rapping, Jeremiah. Controversial Fuck opinion. You. I think the second half of Mad City is better than the first half. The album Ooh. or the song? The, the song. Wait, it's wait, which half is that? Is that the half that goes? The yeah, second yeah, half is the yeah, one with MC yeah. Ite. Yeah, oh yeah, he's a solid verse. I mean, I don't see, I don't see a problem with that. Okay, but most people are like, oh yeah, the first song, it's so catchy. Oh, I, it's wait, like, I like wait, 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 wait. Is the is the Ivy's on bodies, Ivy's on Ivy's? Is that line in the first half or the second half of Mad City? I think it's in the first half. Okay, then the first half is better because that line is fucking like, oh Jesus! I just like cry every time I hear it. Mm, anyway, it's song... Mad City's tight. Well, I'm still like, I don't know how I feel about Compton as the closer, honestly. Because that song is just like, I mean, I was never like a big fan of like the Chronic hip hop, you know. I f- I feel like, it's the like first... that song just seems too. The song feels too California love to me, and I just like don't. I, f- don't I feel know. like the first two bonus tracks that they have on there, uh, the recipe and what's the other one I'm thinking of right now? Black Boy Fly. Uh, bu- 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 uh, now or never, yeah, or the recipe and now or never. I feel like those two. If you made those two the ending, it would be like ten times better. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the bonus tracks are very good. But yeah, Good Mad City, very good album. I think To Bimba Butterfly is better. And I'll, I think we all can yeah. agree that Mortal Man's I... a, is, a, is a lot stronger closer. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. yeah. That's because that, that's that's that's... that album was designed with no bonus tracks. I, I still like it a little intro to the to Compton's entertaining. This is King King of the um, Mar. Yeah, but... I mean, I think Good Kid, Mad City, and Tube Deep are pretty much on the same level for me. They're both, like, classics. It's like, they're, you just look at those, you look classics. You know, you look at, like, another hip-hop, like, I don't know, I look at other hip-hop albums that, like, came out, like, any Drake album, like, you look at it, you're like, this is a great album, like, you, you can tell this is a great album, but it's like, it's not a classic. Like, you just look at the cover of Good Kid, Mad City, and you're like, this is a classic, and it's like, I don't know. I don't know. A short like, film. The, yeah. It's just like... It's because just one of those the thing is, it, it's so epic in scale and it succeeds in every way. It's like this is yeah, it's, it's, it's like, like this album, it has to be a future classic. Like same with Tip and Butterfly. I think that album. Well, like, it's not even a future classic. It's a modern classic. Right? Yeah, modern. Classic. I, feel, I feel like modern classics are way stronger than, mm-hmm. or at least it's a way bigger compliment than a future classic. Because modern classic, it's like, yeah. In it, okay. what, would an instant classic be like the same thing, pretty much? Oh my god, I hate that term. Yeah, well, that's that's what it is. Because when I first so, listened so to Tip and Butterfly, I, as soon as I, as soon as it was well, yeah, like, pop, pop. pop it was, a collective, it was a collective mind fuck for everyone. After that, it was like, okay, this sounds classic. Tell my kids I don't, I don't care that, that I just listened to it for the first time and it came I was out the, there today. When T Pat like, was accidentally released online a week early, I was there for the first can concert. Anyways, okay, um, can I, can I, can I that, continue what I was trying to say? We're like, after that first listen, I was like, this is a classic. Like, I don't care what people say, yeah, this is a fucking you, classic. You, the way you tied it together with a poem was just beautiful. It's like this is this is one of the best songs I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, I mean, I what, what album is gonna be the song this year? Nothing. What album is gonna be the song in, in, in the past five years? Nothing. Uh, I don't know. I, I that's a pretty big opinion there. But oh, you don't I, like it, but Dark Fantasy. I like it. Anyway, I like. It. Um, good. Second, I off, like Dark moving, Fantasy. I just don't like this on, too. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> I don't um, want to get in that Empress mess. Empress of new album. Me, Empress of Me. Oh my. God. Days. This album is fucking amazing. I've had this album like on repeat the past few days. It's tight. I th- they might have gotten best new music from Pitchfork. I, think I don't it know. Did, yeah. it, was it released by uh, Domino? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so she's a, she's a she's a Honduras American singer, and it is just this amazing, gorgeously crafted like pop album. Like lots of statements like feminist identity, like sexuality, just. There's a song called Water Water, which might be, which is like one of my favorites I've heard so far this year. 
and it is about like it's like what's the why it's like water is a privilege there's like a, it's like and it's and it's like political and it's just got a lot of things and there's a song called kitty cat about like it's it's really like sexual and like but like really like empowering and it's a short listen it's 10 songs 35 minutes and it's just a really really great listen and it's it's kind of like it kind of i think the it treads the line i guess if you want to hear two artists it's most similar to it's kind of like fka twigs meets sylvanesso is the best way i'd describe it but like yeah, so it's not like quite, it's music. not quite as like ape shit crazy as fka twigs but it's not like it's not like synth poppy and like not not that sylvanesso is like it's, it's like not easily. maybe simplistic yeah but it's, it's yeah it's, it's it's not it's like it's like not as ape shit crazy as fka twigs but it's still some experimental some like like, like minimal like kind of kind of sharp like electronic beats and it's just it's just a really really great pop album one that i'm definitely gonna be returning to it's so good i've listened to it like three times today and it's just it's just really really impressive i think it's is it her no it's not her debut but it's my first album from her and i'm impressed i'm really impressed it's really really great and it's like just a you can like her views you just like you get them right away and you're like i feel this and it's also catchy and it's just like good thing anyways um so that's all I gotta say. Everyone listen to this album. Highly recommended. Okay. Came out of- yeah. Since uh, th- this is since we were gonna talk about something else, and then we're like, oh, we should probably not talk about this. Not not yet. Maybe next week when we have probably more because on. none of us had listened to it before then. Why well, did it's but, poison season? It's poison by season. The That'll way. be our main topic next week, guys. Because I know Jeremiah Spoilers. really wants to talk about that album. But but at the same Even time, the people weeks here, old. the people here. Listen to it for the first time yesterday. That's Pretty like, good. But I was I was already not... to talk about it, but I'm cool with yeah. This you too. listened to it twice. That's not. I enough. listened to it once. <laughs> exactly. It's not acceptable. No, but you're gonna be like Times Square is a great song. It's like I agree. Times Square is one of the best songs of the year, but it's like there's a lot more to it than that. I know. There's there's I like the way he I mean... bookended it like that. Yeah, like no, that was cool. my favorite part of the album. Bangkok. Was is... yeah. Anyways, Bangkok was good. Okay, okay, anyways, Billboard, how, hey, Billboard Top topic. 10 discussion, let's do this. Billboard, <laughs> Billboard Hot 100. Hey, shout out to Pop Heads. Oh uh, we're doing this for you. Okay, number 10 oh on the Billboard Top 10. Ed Sheeran Photograph, the song's fucking boring. Yeah, I, I, don't, like... I don't know why that's there. It's, it's alright. Um, well, I kind of like the boringness. Ed Sheeran, guys. Everybody likes Ed Sheeran because he's white and he's sad boy. And he he has red hair. He's disgusting looking. He's a disgusting looking human like being. But somehow he dated Ellie Goulding. Okay, now I need I to look at him. Anyway, Ed Sheeran makes really like boring, like draggy, like cliche pop. The thing is, it appeals to the appeals to the demographic because they're like, oh my God, oh my God, Ed Sheeran. Guys, who comes Stevens? I I'm. <laughs> as far as like what I do with Sufjan, or it's like what indie heads do with Sufjan as well. Like pop, li- but like pop, like what what plebeians do with Ed Sheeran is like what indie heads do with. Okay, Sufjan. I will. Hold on, let, I, me, let me admit something. I think Ed Sheeran, when he's making like those <laughs> Justin Timberlake esque songs, like the song he did with Pharrell and that one song about Ellie yep, Goulding, I thought those are two great songs. But when he goes in the ballad like, territory, it's like fuck you, Ed Sheeran. Ballads, his ballads are just unbearable. Like that one song. Oh my God! Thinking out loud. Well, you're the word like the YouTuber. <laughs> all right so first of all that chorus goes on for like a minute second of all that song like it made everyone that song and um see you again made everyone think that like oh man we got to capitalize on this ballad craze so suddenly the top 40 got filled with ballads and the top 40 the first half of this year was the shittest thing until trap queen came along and saved the pop yes no uptown funk was like number one funk is good too I didn't appreciate Uptown yeah, Funk until I saw that video. was stuck on number one forever. Like, but Uptown <laughs> Funk, yeah. Uptown Funk, and Trap Queen like saved the day, like from from the terrible white boy blues that was like it's like it, just, it was it was terrible. The Anyways, the day. moving on. I'm I'm the actual Trap Queen, by the way, guys. Oh yeah. Man, throw, throw back to like three weeks ago when Maddie shouted me out before I even joined. That was a good time. <laughs> Okay, but yeah, photograph. It's fucking boring. Ed Sheeran, please stop making ballads for the love of God, dude. You're not that good of a songwriter to make ballads, or at least you're you're just deciding to make really terrible songs when you make ballads. They're boring. Please stop. I know you can make better music than this. Seriously, Eddie, buddy, come on. Okay, number number nine, R City featuring Animal Veen. 
walked away. I thought it was cute. I don't like Adam Levine. Uh, I, don't like him. I can barely. I don't even. I, I can barely tell he was on the song. So that's good. I thought it was a Maroon Five song at first, but then I'm like, wait, no, that's just I mean, Adam Levine. He's just there. Like the <laughs> I, most I tolerance really I have. The most tolerance I have for him is heard him say that's the only time I can just listen to him. I liked I the, the early Maroon Five singles. I like those. I liked his song with Kanye. That's great. Um, but yeah, Maroon Five is just turned into just a huge sellout band. They fucking suck. But I don't mind the song. I thought it was cute. Like it, it didn't offend me. Maroon, Maroon Five is just Adam Levine. Pretty minus, much. or yeah, Adam I don't Levine even know anybody else this. in that band. Because it's because Adam Levine is like it's a pop. It's a pop group. They're a pop group. And Adam Levine is the front man. And it's like good for him. And I like they do cool things sometimes. Sometimes they don't. But it's like I feel like as far as as far as radio rock goes, I feel like they're they're I think they're probably one of the better acts. Like cause you look at all right, so what's another big one? Run Run Republic. One Republic mm-hmm. I have a really weird relationship with. Because on one hand they make songs like counting like counting stars Which are or great. shooting stars. Shooting Stars, which is just like that no, song counting bangs. Stars. No, Counting Stars is great. I think that's that song, song bangs yeah, until stars the is bridge. Good. Until the bridge, when the entire song just becomes like the shittiest song I've ever heard. Like I'm just like this song is amazing. I'm so much enjoying. It. It's like take that money, watch it burn, throw it in the river. The lessons I learned. Just like ah! oh like, god, like, oh, god that god. song. I I just <laughs> realized what song that I was. Just want to castrate a small child? Like <laughs> I'm enjoying the song. I'm enjoying the song so much. Like for the first two minutes, I'm like oh man. I need you to do me a favor. Right and then, Take that money, watch it burn, sing in the river, the red, and then they start like, oh no, wait, you already did it. On top of it, and I just want to punch her. <laughs> and it's awful. It is so Are awful. Are you okay? But then they Are you one okay? Is the way you sing it. Song. Um, I'm okay. Oh, what's that other song they had? They had the, um, the something about running. It's too late to apologize. Not, not that, one. That, song, that song is a classic. Don't it's even fight. But yeah. they that one song, that one recent song about running, and it's like, um, no devil. Wait, sorry, wait, wait, wait. It's like, I'm I had an angel on my shoulder and Mephistopheles. It's a like casual Mephistopheles drop. Just like, right? <laughs> oh, that song bangs. The dude, the, the writer for One Republic, the song, the pop, he's, he was a pop songwriter. Or no, he's sorry, he was just a pop songwriter before he made One Republic. And so, I mean, he's just like a really, really excellent pop writer. So I can't really front him. He's, they're, they're good. Anyways, next song. Betty Watt featured Rami Boys, um, 769, um, 679, I haven't heard it. Yes, yeah. I, I so, the beats. Well, let's let Rennie have no, her time to shine for this I one. Need to, I need to talk about Betty Watt because he has the key to Patterson, New Jersey, but he also has the key to my heart. Let's let's be real. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, so anyways, um, yeah, so obviously Trap Queen is still the best Betty Wop song. I mean, that's... But, I like um, my way better. No, Trap Queen. But anyways, um, yeah, here especially. Now, if you guys don't know me, I'm from New Jersey. So, um, yeah. So anyways, especially in this area, like I'm maybe 20 minutes away from where Fetty is from. So he has a huge, like, weird cultural impact here, like, amongst just the teenagers. And it's so, like, the first time I heard Trap Queen, it's like I was a changed person. He's just, like, a female around here because he's sort of, like, a hometown hero. Like, I don't know. It's really weird. But, yeah, everybody here is, it's just Fetty is, like, I mean, I he's don't know. He's a golden like, once- god in the state of New Jersey. Yeah, he's the one good thing. He's the one good thing. Um, um, there, are, there are a lot of great... Um, I like Michael Jones. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, Have you listened to talk... Bruce Springsteen? Have you listened to Bruce Springsteen I before? hate Springsteen. I, to- I talked right, then about you're, this. Not, you're not even from like New Spring... Jersey. Like, why are you... You're, you're not from New Jersey if you dislike Bruce Springsteen. Exactly. I want to like... leave. <laughs> and then why don't you listen to Bruce Springsteen if you want to leave? That's the whole his music's about. Or that's, the first, no, like, it's... that's like his first like four albums is about leaving New Jersey. And then he realized he had to get older. And so he started making really mature songs. And Bruce Springsteen's the man. My mom, like, was a huge... She was from New Jersey. She was from the Jersey Shore. She's a huge Springsteen fan. She served his table. She served a table for him at a a pancake house. And he's just a cool guy. And we share the same birthday, which is in six days. Happy birthday. No, four days. Four days. Four days. Happy birthday. (laughs) 
No, five days. Four days. Four days. Happy birthday, Mr. Spring. You, f you anyway, forgot. Okay, anyways, your, back your to Funny Wop, please. Anyways, okay, yeah. Things. No more, mo no more Springsteen. But yeah. So what was I even talking about? He just started talking about Springsteen, and I like yeah, I got completely off. The king of your heart. Bruce He's the best thing about yeah, New Jersey. Okay. He makes New Jersey yes. tolerable for you. Yeah, that. Um. But yeah, it's just I, he sort of like came out of nowhere and then he's just like he's really good. And then especially since I'm like from where he is from, it's like, oh, yeah, this is a really cool thing. And also he's super catchy. And I don't know. It's just really I'm getting kind of overwhelmed right now. I don't know. This, it's it's really late. This is late for me. But anyway, okay, well, let's actually talk about the song 679 because. Yeah. We, I, I love well, the, I already I love... said it. Of all the singles he's released so far, I think it's my least favorite from him, but I still like it. Yeah. Yeah, same. I think his, his rapping, his voice on it is just weird, and, and the rapping-wise, it's like, you're so damn fine, though. It's like, uh... But the, the hook is great. The yeah. The hook is great, but... And the Remy, the Remy boys on it, they aren't too bad. Uh, it's, it's a fun it's a fun song. I like it. Yeah, it's good. Shout it's out to Fatty Wap. Hey, single ways out there. I'm a trap king, and I'm looking for my trap queen. Hit me up. No. Please stop. 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 Just, just don't even. Stop. Okay, number six. Wait, no, this is number seven. Selena Gomez featuring ASAP Rocky. Good for you. Selena Gomez, she should add, she should add two more Zs to her last name because this track is a fucking bore. I really don't know how I, I feel like... about Selena. I don't, I don't know. It's just... I really don't know. She, uh, the song is terrible. It's bad. Yeah. It's so fucking boring. Even the ASAP couldn't save this track. I'm sorry. No, this flow is terrible on the song. Yeah, I know. It's that's like what I'm he saying. was rapping over terrible. a different beat, and they changed it in, in, in like, in, in in the mixing or something because like his his flow was off. That's what I'm and saying. Even the best terrible. thing about Rocky is that he has a great flow, but like it was off in the song. But yeah, the song's terrible. It was boring. Selena Gomez. Ugh. Why? 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 Is it because she's Taylor Swift's best friend at this point? It has to be. Nah, it's because she's hot. That's true. She's hot. And she's and she's been around forever. She's the last thing. She's like made herself an important celebrity. That's true. But still, the song is so boring, and it's just ugh. Anyways, moving on. Major Laser featuring M M O with a M O with a dash in it, and DJ Snake it's lean like on. Arthi, the last so time you... we last time we talked about this, Arthi went on, on kind of like a rant about like the Americanization of Indian culture. Yeah, American good for Arthi. Yeah, I, I agree with that. her. Arthi like... is great. I like the song. I like it. It's it's nice. It's it's catchy. It's not insulting to me. It's got some interesting production. I mean, I think Diplo is a really good producer, but sometimes he just doesn't show it because you know money. Um. But, like, his work with M.I.A. is just stellar. Mm -hmm. And, of course, he does come through with these, like, moments of brilliance. Like, on, you know, Where Are You Now? That's just, that's a brilliant track. But if anything, yeah, I think Skrillex I is the main reason why the track I is so like brilliant. Because I think he, he, I think Skrillex, like, his contributions are the one, are the reasons why I like the song so much. Like, the little, like, the vocal ma manipulation in the hook. Oh, yeah. That mm -hmm. was him, apparently. But, yeah, I, I like, I like the song. It's nice. What do you think, Jeremiah? I haven't listened to it. Okay, number... We're, no we're just going through these real quick. Does anyone else have anything to say about Lena? I, I know this song, now. I got oh. this song. Five. Okay, number five, Omi, okay. Cheerleader. This song yeah, just this dropped song is... pretty badly. I... The, the trumpet is, like... is the most exciting yeah, thing, and it appears for bad. all of about five seconds. Yeah. Is, is like... this really still, like, in the top ten? Or yeah, it's still in the top ten. It was number one, like, two weeks ago. I guess Hasn't you heard the song, song Cheerleader, by like... Omi? A couple of years. How's it going? Like... Oh, I think that I found myself oh, a cheerleader. You see, like no one remembers how the song goes. Like my my roommate doesn't know how to remember how the song I goes. I just sang it he, for he you, could sing along with it. Okay, good. I'm glad we had this discussion. All right. Well, it's kind of like a. It's both like a song that you're like, oh, I know this song, you enjoy it, but it's also like really forgettable. But it's also like tight at the same time. Like you hear it, you get really excited. I it's like it. Like, it's okay. Yeah. It's like yeah, and you're like eh. It, it, but it is like it's like when you hear that there's uh, yeah no one's gonna remember it like by next year yeah. didn't it come out last year <laughs> i think no the, like yeah, the, the song that got said, big is like... a remix apparently 
Oh, all right. Because but, yeah. I know there's one guy on the Slack who, like, I don't know, he just started, I forget what the context was, but we started talking about Cheerleader, and he's like, oh, that song brings back memories from, like, two years ago. And I'm like, oh, all right. So, yeah, I don't know why this is still popular. Well, it says Anyways, it's a remix. Yeah, well, but still, hasn't it, hasn't the remix been out for, like, ever also? I don't know. Again, I mean, again, somebody that I used to know, that song came out like a year before it became a big song. True, yeah. So this shit happens randomly, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, your pop star now. Have fun. So yeah, it's okay. I I enjoy it. Um. Okay. Ugh. The number four, Salento, aka I can't believe it's not Ray Shermer. Watch me. Parentheses. <laughs> get a brain lobotomy. Hold on, guys. Yo. Hold on. Wait a second. Wait a second. Can hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That was not. Was um, that... Hold, hold on. on. Hold on, guys. I got this. Good, good joke about know. suicide. All right, that Rip. was distasteful. <laughs> Moving on. That song. The song is pretty good, actually. Like, I like the beat a lot because it's like a trap beat, and normally trap beats are like, like really like bland. You know, they're bland. There's not a lot of melody going. I mean, it's cool. It can't be cool. But for some, you know, I just kind of like. I do like it when they when they throw in some like cool like sounds and some cool like synthesizer melodies. And this song happens to have a great little simple synthesizer melody over the trap beat, and I really enjoy it. And even if the song is dumb, I like the beat a lot. And it's and it's a meme, mind. and it made a dance that people can have fun with, and it's not. It didn't even make I, the dance. It stole the dance. It stole. What well, doesn't matter? Stole, it has a it's dance. It's like, oh wow, the Nene's popular. Oh, okay. Also, the whip is very popular. Yeah, the Nene's just make a song about because I want to cash in. It it's doesn't pan- matter. It is pan- what matters is it's a thing that people enjoy. It's a meme. What's the deal with Good trap beats? At least Soldier Boy, that was his own dance. He made that dance. This is just pandering. Yeah, because this song is literally made to be put in the trend. It doesn't no. matter. This is a fun song. It's not a big deal. I'm witnessing also, it my even first. Sound like Race to Murd. Chill out. Race to Murd is good. Better. I like Race to Murd. I love yeah, them. They're, so good. they're amazing. But this song is a good one. And it's to, like, to, why to the hell is it like Up Like Trump this thing. big? Why the hell did No Flex Song get this big? Safe why the sex. hell did, did No Type get this big? Throw some money. Um, so moving on, Justin Bieber. What oh. do you mean? Oh my God, this song is way too good. It is. It's actually what? sad how much I actually enjoy it. It's. I don't know. Like so I hate good. Bieber. But... I've been telling oh. you guys. I've been saying since like late 2013 when when Bieber came out with journals. I'm like, this dude is gonna make really good music. Like th- I like journals. I think it's a good album. And this dude's gonna make even better music than this. Like he can only go up from here. This, yeah, the beat, beat, good. beat on this song is beat. amazing, and he just and he just like croons over it. It's really silky smooth, and it's like too bad you're a public asshole, and like the meme is to come to hate you. But he, he's it's, been it's going it's on a, like a mandatory really where he's been like just kind of forgive, like saying like, yeah, I'm an idiot. Like, yeah, it's like just like, and I'm just enjoying. I enjoyed it a lot, and I'm just like, I'm really feeling this new. I'm really glad that like funky soul music is kind of coming back, like funky. But the problem, I mean, it's like it'd be better. I mean, I'm, I like it better when it's black people making it. Like because because that's their, no like it's not a joke it's because oh like, yeah yeah it's their their music and I'm not like a big fan of like appropriation but I mean Jay Beebs he did a great job on this track it's a great track I enjoyed it I enjoyed it a lot someone go tell Beaver that a flock of seagulls wants their hair back <laughs> not a funny joke uh, moving on <laughs> no no, no can, can I talk run. about it because I want to talk about it I didn't really get to talk about Fine. it. It's a, it's a really good song. It, it is really good. I like the. I think is the beat. Is it? Is it oh, 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 I forgot you talked about it. I did, but I just kind of talked about it for like a long time. So far away. Yeah. But yeah, what do you mean? Great song. Uh, number two. Okay, this, okay. I'm gonna use this use this time to talk about the Weekends album, because it. Don't worry, I'll, I'll we'll get back to the songs. Okay, number two and number one. We have the Weekend Hills. Number two. And the weekend camp on my face at number one. I'm just gonna wall them together because I want to talk about his album, uh, "Beauty Behind the Madness." It's it's a disaster of an album. It's it's not the the first half is solid. I like the first half. A lot of good songs in the first half, and then once you get to earn it, it's just nosedive. Fucking nosedive right after that. Incoherent. Just it's just a mess. Just insanely mediocre production. Insanely mediocre songwriting. Just singing that's like, okay, I know you're trying to bell, but you just you're not you're not good enough, man. You're not okay, the production was was possibly your biggest was one of your biggest like 
appeals when you first came out and you're taking it away and that's not good but what are you how many times you've listened to it i, I did a review on it it should come out like this week I mean, just like just how many times because my brother was talking about it to me today and i want to i want to see if his thoughts line up with yours i've given it about four or five listens the first okay half, okay well, okay so that's so my brother okay so here's what he said the first like three listens he like enjoyed a lot and then the next listens he was like this is really shallow and like white girl awfulness i'm like or not but okay sorry i read sorry um it's like like you know just like shitty like cliche bad pop and it was like oh this is awful and then like he'd like 20 listens into it like he listened to it 20 more times he was like oh my god this is so deep and amazing and so that's that was my brother's opinion on it and okay. so he says it's really good the weekend i can forgive his songwriting because like his voice is incredible <laughs> just listen to it 10 times just listen to it 20 times and you'll no. see all the deep meaning and i trust my brother right. um okay. but i actually haven't heard the hills that's like one song i probably i probably recognize if i heard it but I do know can't feel my face. I can't feel my face. But okay, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go. Okay, real life, I, I hated it at first, but then I enjoyed it on the second list. I'm like, okay, this is okay. I still kind of eh on it. Losers is nice production, but also like, eh. Uh, tell your friends. At first, I was like, eh, but now I'm like, okay, yeah, uh huh. I got, I got, I dig it. And then often it's just a banger. Often is a fucking banger. Jesus Christ, that's the best song on the album by far. And then you got, you know, uh, The Hills, which is also a great song. And, like, the Often in the Hills, that is, like, Classic Weekend, pretty much. That's Classic Weekend, but with, like, a little bit of a mainstream pop edge. And that's perfect. Like, I dig this. And then you, you have a Queen, which I really like. It's got a bit of a trap influence to it. Sorry, I just... Never mind. Yeah, but trap influence. Uh, the, the ending part is really good. I uh, can't put my face... Of, great track it's like if it, it's it's like if we resurrected mj and told him to write a song this would be it it's like it's like mj's soul went to abel abel testifier how do you pronounce this goddamn last name i'll just say the weekend it's like if michael jackson resurrected and went to the weekend's body and wrote that song for him and then sung it and then he left his it's like it's like bye bye abel hope you enjoyed that song okay that was a really bad joke i apologize <laughs> Uh, Shameless is really nice because it's like acoustic and then it kind of goes an electric guitar and it's really cool. Earned It is fucking boring. It's so goddamn boring. It's like, it doesn't fit, it, it does not fit at all in the album because it's like this orchestral, orchestral, orchestral production. And it's just, ugh. And then In the Night is, is also, it's it's basically like Can't Feel My, it's, it's like a demo of Can't Feel My Face. But then they realize, oh, this, Can't Feel My Face is better, but they still put this on the album anyways. It's very MJ like, but also, but it's not good because it's like okay, I, this is really fucking corny. Like it's real corny. As you are, I don't remember, but it's also corny. Dark Times featuring Ed Sheeran, it's it's boring. Prisoner of the Ray, it's boring. Angel, it is laughably bad. It is so goddamn cheesy and corny. I laugh at that track every single time I listen to it. It is so fucking embarrassing. It's like. What the fuck? Why would you put this on your album? Are you that stupid? Okay, that's all I gotta say about Be Behind the Madness. It has a really strong first half, and then a really weak second half. I think uh, the Here Was Like Here Likes Music review is very accurate, where it's just like it was a steam in its second half because it does. Okay, do you guys want to talk about the songs? Um, I mean. I like, I like, can't feel my face. I honestly don't even, I didn't listen to the whole album, so. I don't um, feel it, honestly. Yeah, no, I so honestly weird. haven't listened to The Weeknd since, like, Trilogy, and I can't believe, like, just now, oh, he's got, like, the top two songs on the Billboard. Like, wow, good job, Abel, or however you pronounce his name. I think it's Abel. But, okay, um, but yeah. It's like the first time I heard Can't Feel My Face, I'm like, oh my god, what? Because I hadn't listened to him since, like, the trilogy was over. So I'm like, wait, what is this? But it's, like, good. And I I don't know. The Hills, like, it plays on the radio, and I'm like, oh, okay. But Can't Feel My Face is better. And I still haven't listened to the album. So that's that's really all I have to say. It's just, it's um, good. I like these two songs, but every time I think of the title Can't Feel My Face, I immediately think of the Island song first, from like three years ago. That was my nice. impression of The weekend. 
because the weekend probably does cocaine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, favorite songs on the top 100. Okay, Maddie, the... do you want to start? Hotline Bling, number one, baby. It's number 16 on the charts right now. It's slowly rising. It could get number one if Drake makes a video for it. It's definitely going to go number one. This track is fucking amazing. You used to call me on my cell phone. Um... Play now when you need. It's it's like holy shit. This is like the perfect pop song. Oh my god, it's amazing. The songwriting is great. The the beat is great. Drake is great on it because he's on his R and B shit and it's awesome. But it still has a bit of his like little rap edge to it where he's not like. <laughs> it's still got a little. He's still got a little, <laughs> still got a little bit of roughness to his voice and that's fine. That's great. It, this is a, this is a perfect pop song in my opinion. It is it is my pop song of the year easily. Probably one of my favorite songs this year in general, and this it's amazing. It's just, it's like a, it's like God came down from the heavens and presented us this song in a silver platter. It's amazing. Yeah. Thanks, Pitchfork. Um, my fuck song. you, Jeremiah. Fuck you. <laughs> Don't fuck you, fuck you. They didn't even get his best name. Speaking music, of Pitchfork, time for my mine is gonna start out with like a two paragraph long story that's like quasi related oh. to the song because i'm because i'm doing pitchfork style so when me and my roommate when we first like moved in we opened up so we, we, we came in and it was like all right so our room was the tiniest one we had the smallest room and the room we just had to figure out a way to rearrange the room and so it took us about like two hours to get this perfect oh it's perfectly arranged absolutely perfect anyways so i pull out of my backpack i'm like all right atticus and i pull out my taylor swift 18 month calendar and he's like, oh my god, no way. And he pulls what? out his Taylor Swift fearless calendar. He has a fearless what? calendar. I have an 18-month Taylor Swift calendar. Anyways, <laughs> so my favorite song on the top 100 right now is one of the best songs from 1989, Wildest Dreams. Oh my god. Oh my god, I love this song so much. This song makes me, oh, oh. So, oh, how does, oh it's just like, oh it's, just, oh, it's just fucking, oh my god. It's like, it's so, and it just makes me feel so many things. And when I saw her live, when she performed the song, like, I was, like, I was, like, I, I was, it was, whoo, it was, like, tearing up a little bit. My brother was super drunk, and he was, like, having, like, a breakdown, because his breakup was, like, brutal, and, because she, she, yeah, it was anyways. Um, and so, it's just, oh, say you'll remember me, standing in a white dress, staring at the sunset, it's like, oh, Taylor. Ah, and she's like, in my wildest dreams, ah, ah, and that part right there, the ah, oh, it's just like, oh, kill me. And then like, right when you're like, oh my god, like then she, then she says, it, oh then she does the verse one, she does the chorus one last time. Chill, you can mute your mic if you don't like this. And then she, then like the last verse, the last chorus, she like says like no beat under it, and you're like, oh Taylor, just give me another chorus. I just need another chorus in my life. And she's like. I got your goods right here. And she just drops another chorus just right in your face. Just boom. Just like, oh, ah! just dying. And it's just like, it's all fucking amazing. Wildest Dreams is so good. I love 1989 so much. And I will also be so sad if it wins the album of the year at the Grammys, which I know it will. But just if like. Yeah, it's definitely going to win. Like, I know. It has it, to be Black Messiah. Because T Bab's not going to win because it has the N word in it. And it's a no, hip-hop no, album. I feel like they have to give the Kendrick after after the after Good Kid Messi didn't win like a single Grammy. They have to. Well, well I know that that the, the, the concept like okay, we have to we no, have like, redeem ourselves. This one's the, already won one rumor with I. I mean, the, yeah, the consolation album. Do it, they yeah, need to redeem him again. No, it's gonna be Black. If it's any, if it's either of those two albums, it's gonna be Black Messiah. Because Black Messiah is a huge comeback from a pretty famous guy, and it's sort of freaking masterpiece. It might be better. I, it might be better than T Bad. I it might be, I don't know. They're pretty. They're pretty much all the same. They're pretty similar and they're pretty amazing, but and that's so accessible and so easy. And it's definitely if and I feel like that's the best one because it's the least like super. It's not like super offensive to white people, but they can be like, wow, black lives really do no, no, matter. No, no. It's, it's okay, really it, was no, offensive for me to tweet if, cat lives matter when Cecil the lion got killed. Okay, Anyways. okay, Jeremiah. If it isn't 1989, and it's not a butterfly, it's probably gonna be Alabama Shake's album. Mm, it's Black Messiah is more likely. That's a pretty bold claim there. I again, I know, I know. The thing is, it, it would be Muff- it's going to be like the Arcade Fire of twenty ten, pretty much to to the Grammys. No. It oh yeah. Just, if anything, it would be Mumford and Sons. 
But if, if they gave it to him again, I'd be. I, I don't think they got him no, this time. I think they, at least they have to. So it's it's either it's going to be 1989 or Black Messiah or T Pab. It's going to be one of those three. I just can't see any other. And if it's not Black Messiah or T Pab, then that people Kanye better fucking go up there. I'll be upset <laughs> if Kanye doesn't go up there. But I think well, here's the thing. Though. Here's the thing though. If 1989 wins, I know Taylor Swift. I know she loves Kendrick. She will. If she doesn't straight up give the award to Kendrick, she'll 100% like shout him out and like share it with him or something. Anyways, well, Ted, what's your favorite song on the, on the well, top Well, this one? is cheating, but it's all right. It is all right. Gonna As be usual. All right. Go, I mean, that, right. that chorus, man. Okay, make it a hook. Uh, well, right, I wake up. You just only look at me. Okay, I can't sing it because I can't fucking rap. I, I don't, again, Kendrick, his flow is so impressive. It's like, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> like, the way... This album just ties its themes together, and this particular song really just summarizes it well. I like it. And it's right after U2, which is just such a powerful, depressing track of, like, he is, like, that man hates himself, and I feel it. Because I hate myself, too, sometimes. And that song really it's makes a, me feel that way. And it's in me. a good way, too. It's in between a couple of really weird tracks, like For Sale, as well. <laughs> oh, For Sale right is... Uh... Odd. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, I was gonna. I All right, I, th- I still think I still maintain that probably the best song in the album is definitely "Mama." Just that beat, just the oh my, the beat is the best beat of the year. Is and this, then also, is it, is it produced by Knowledge? Uh, yes. yes. Okay, yes. I was making sure it was that track. It's the you my favorite off the album. That one, and then the then the first verse is amazing. That this feeling is unmatched. This feeling is brought to you by a general and a good rap. The second verse is the I know everything. And then you're like, wow, Kendrick, you're so ignorant. And he's like, I thought I knew everything until I came home. And you're like, whoa, Kendrick. And you're like, damn. My favorite is verse, how much a dollar costs. The third verse is easily the most impactful because it's the one where he's talking to the black kid from South Africa. And you're just like, fuck. And it also starts with I need that sloppy. Like, it has the meme down. has a meme, right? Has a fucking oh, amazing. That beat. instantly wins. No, no, we got, we got, we got to do the checklist. Meme, amazing beat, three unique and easily amazing verses, and then an amazing outro, which is very that has a beat change, some random beat change, and it's just like this is a world premiere. This is a world no, premiere. Yeah. That guy really annoying for me for some reason. Well, that's because you're fuckboy. Anyways, yeah. I'll have you know how much a dollar costs is a much better song. How much a dollar cost? I'm willing to hold up that game. You is the best song on the album. It is my song of the year. I love that song. Nine years coming. Because it makes me happy. <laughs> so. I made a vine about the screams on that. It's it's a terrible vine. I don't recommend you watching it. I think I made it because Stefan made a joke about it. I was like, I'll just going to make this a vine real That's quick. I think, I think it was probably the best hit song of the year. The only one that I think like, oh, contends nice. is Escape from Me by Billy Bad. Let me say Jeremiah What? Mm-hmm. Mike. Denise. Okay, let's. Okay. I wasn't talking to Oh. What? What happened? Did we just. I don't know. I think we just. Did lost. we just. I, th- I think everyone died. Meet my mic? Okay, sorry about that, everyone. Uh, I guess we'll come back to, <laughs> to her later with her best song. Let's just go into the. Uh, to We're, our just... Later. We're just going. To our least favorite song on, on the Hot 100, excluding the top 10. Okay, Classic Man. Okay, I don't full on hate the I... song, but it's it's probably the mo- one of the most ironic songs I have ever heard in my entire life. Okay, so Jadena here, he's a classic man, okay? Look at the way he looks. He has this classic looking beard. He wears the nicest suits, okay? It's like, it's like he came straight from... It's like he time traveled from the 1920s, okay? Yet... He is rapping over a shitty DJ Mustard ripoff. There are so many levels of irony to that. Like, I want to scratch my fucking eyes out. You know what I want to do? Hold on a second. You're going to do it right now? <laughs> oh my god, myself. this again. <laughs> because it's just the levels of irony are like... The thing is, the irony is so high, it would protect my head. As in, the bullet would not be able to go through the iron. It would just bounce so many off. Layers of it. But yeah, I hate the I the song is just fucking oh god. Janomane, what are you doing? Like seriously. Like this dude has a good voice, but like seriously dude, you shouldn't like you'd be better off like rap like when when you think of Classic Man, you think, oh he's gonna you know, he's gonna sing over like like some Frank Sinatra shit. 
but no, it's fucking DJ Mustard. And it's like, why? Why? Why do you do this to us? Why? If you guys don't already know, I hate DJ Mustard with a passion. That dude can go fuck himself, okay? Jesus Christ. I hate him. I just hate him. I hate him. I'm just, I could say something really inappropriate about him right now, but I'm not going to. Say it. Because then Lucas would probably get pissed at me. Or you, you would too. Okay, then don't say it. Well, yeah, because that's kind of why I wanted you to say it. Just like, like, yell at you. But you don't have to. <laughs> Do you want me to say it? Cause... Nah, it'll probably just make me upset. But I feel like he's just hes just a producer who makes beats you don't like. And I feel like you don't really have, like, you feel like he doesn't really deserve your ire that much. As opposed to, like, someone who's done bad things to a lot of people. Like Monsanto. You should channel your blame. You should channel your hate towards Monsanto. And the IMF. There you go. Those are two people for you to hate more than DJ Mustard. Can I hate on capitalism? Yes, you can. Yeah. Fuck capitalism. It's all about communism in this bitch. All about socialism. Shouts out to Okay, Marxism. well now now you're being ironic and you're just not I'm not Okay, Jer- okay Jeremiah, go to your thing. Uh what's my thing? What's your my thing? Is thinking out loud. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did we already talk about Ed Sheeran? Did we already talk about we him? We talked about Thinking Out Loud and how it was a terrible song. We, we can go more into it. But Thinking Out Loud is just awful. It's just like... We la right where we were. And like that, like that chorus is like one of the most cliche and just shitty written like love songs. It's just so like bullshit and just like this is why love songs are, are shitty. Oh, Jeremiah, you, know that, you know that girl who denied me to prom? Like... Four days after I asked her, like singing, yeah, she's saying this at like a choir like concert. Of course she did. I am not surprised. That's why you shouldn't have asked her to prom in the first place. Anyways, um, thinking out loud, it's hella just dumb and angsty, and it's not even angsty. It's just like a really cliche, fucking boring, boring boring. looks. And the sentiments in it are—they're not even cute. They're just like. It's, gross. It, it's not kind of, genuine. It's like, this feels huh. fake. This gross. Feels... And the video's kind of cool, but it's like, the song is really boring. But then here's the problem. This song hit, like, number one or something. And everyone's like, like it oh one. my god, I need to make this. And then everyone started making their fucking shitty, awfully written ballads. Swarm the top Swarm the, Swarm the top 40. Top radio was unlistenable. Not that I really listened to it anyways, but, like, sometimes my brother and I would, like, troll around on it, and it was just, like, terrible. It was just terrible. It was just a terrible, it was just a terrible time. It's a terrible time. Thank you, Ed Sheeran. Fucking asshole. Also, I was at Barnes & Noble today with my brother, and I looked at their vinyl section, and oh, I God. saw an album that looks like Microcastle by Deer Hunter, and I got... Really oh, weird. yes, I know that feeling. I, and then it I've... turned out it was... I mean, I already own it on vinyl. I, found it, I like, pulled it out, and I had that I face, so like, excited. staring back at, at me, and I'm just... <gasps> I got so excited, and then it was Ed Sheeran. I was like, what the... Like, what? Like, why did you put your face on... Why did you... Why did you... No, I pulled it out, and I had that face staring back at me, and I'm just like, how could you do this? I was so excited. You... And then it turned you... out to be Ed Sheeran. And anyway, so I had to... You know, whenever you go to Barnes & Noble, Best Buy, or anything, you always gotta make sure you rearrange the selections to put, like, good music in front. So I put, like, the soft bulletin, flaming lips, like... War on drugs up in I front. I put all the good stuff in the back, but so that way. And... I put Black Messiah in the very front. So you just gotta, you just gotta make sure you do that. Just PSA. I put all the good stuff in the back, so that way, if in case I come back, like, because I don't have money, I can always get it later. Don't shop at Barnes and Noble. It's super expensive. Okay, That's... Ted. What's your least favorite song in the Hot 100? Marvin Gaye. Because I feel this is an insult to the man himself. I mean, there it's we bland. Go. Jeremiah, what I, Jeremiah, I could talk about this. Thank you, it's Ted. bland, inoffensive, and mm. I, I don't like it. And what's going on is what, the best. What is wrong with this fucking eyebrow? We, we were talking about this before the podcast. The the eyebrow, eyebrow, yes. If I remember this when I'm editing the podcast tonight, tonight, I will put a picture of his fucking face. Look, look at yes, the eyebrows. That's... Look at him. No, 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 let me remember the timestamp real quick. Okay, but one I'm just hour, really glad four, fifteen. Do, do really me a favor. Glad. Put a picture of his face and... Uh, was his name uh, Ed Sheeran like next to each other? Just put their faces next to each other. Ed Sheeran. But then put Marvin Gaye's face, just so everyone can be happy. Because I, Ted, I'm really glad we're on the same page about Marvin Gaye right yes. now. Marvin Gaye is, I honestly think, probably one of the best artists of all time. Let's get it on, and what's going on are two of my absolute favorite albums ever. Let's, Let's get it on. on. I've been listening to it a lot lately. Let's get it on is just amazing because it's both about sex and Jesus, and it's like Marvin. <laughs> 
Oh my god, you couldn't have like hit two things I like like better. Like I'm a huge th- fan of Jesus. I'm a huge fan of Jesus. Jesus was homeboy number one. Also a huge fan of sex. And he's like, Jesus trying to tell the people to come on and get it on. I'm like, yeah, somebody understands. And so anyway, so like half of the song, like all the songs are like overtly about sex. Like right underneath the surface, it's really about his relationship with God. And half the songs are like, ooh, baby, turn yourself around. So is he talking love about fucking God? Good. And then, but then, that's, that's half the songs. And the other half are like really depressing. And it's just like, that's, that's just the album for me. I mean, we already know what's going on. It's the best album of all time. So I don't really need to talk. Does want to fuck Jesus? I don't yeah. know, man. That's that sounds is a pretty high contender. <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> that's homophobic, <laughs> dude. But, I mean, honestly, I would fuck Jesus. I don't have a problem with that. Jesus probably doesn't either. It's like... I don't you know, man. You're... Gay, even, uh, Jesus don't care if he's gay. About... He wouldn't care. The, he the, the care. about Marvin Gaye's relationship with God and also, like, his love life and, like, just, like, how sex is a beautiful thing. But it's not, it's not, like, it's not about, like, having sex with Jesus. So don't, like, get it twisted. I was making a joke, so don't worry. Marvin Gaye's more on, like, a brother level with Jesus. But, um... It's like it's just really it's a really beautiful album. It really moves me, and also like makes me just like dance and cry because. Found out I've been really trying, baby. Do 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 do. Oh my god! And the fucking instrumentation. That album is my favorite. Anyways, Charlie Puth has about? weird fucking eyebrows. He's he right. has the personality of a wet towel. Megan Trainer has the personality of um of a garbage can probably it, it it's it's like it's a dumpster that hasn't been that's over that's overflowing no it's much. like an it's an extra crispy dry towel well no make no megan megan trainer has a personality it's just terrible because she's just you know has just it, it, it's basically she's just a white feminist pretty much <laughs> i'm and, and i'm gonna hang on physical i'm gonna I'm hang on feminism uh, i'm hanging uh, on white uh, feminism uh, <laughs> there's a big difference there's a big difference uh, it's still there's still, that's not this. It's not not what you you didn't say what you mean to, what you meant to say. I don't think I what? don't think you no, meant to say I, what you meant I, to I say. I consider myself a feminist. I hate white feminism because I hate people like Miley Cyrus. What is what is white feminism? White feminism is what feminism is, that is strictly supposed to help just white women. You. It's just it's taking out minorities out of the question. It's like uh, is that what? Take, that's what I mean by that, white feminism. It just takes. It's, it's, it's like okay, over- Jeremiah. An example is is when Miley Cyrus was, was in an interview. Talking about how Nicki Minaj was talking about the VMAs and how Anaconda get nominated, and she was like, "Yeah, you know, she's just you know just like an angry black woman, you know. It's like who cares? Like, eh. That's a problem. Just dis- dis- Nicki. Act- that 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 is white feminism. Okay, well then don't don't call it white feminism though. That's what it's because called. Because the thing is, a vast majority of the people in the feminist movement are white, and so when you call it when you say the white feminist movement, no, it kind of like no, I'm not saying okay, white again again. Jeremiah, okay. Add Neo to the front of it. That sounds much less... Offensive. Wait, okay, I'm not... Okay, feminists would agree with me that <laughs> white feminism is bad. I don't know if they can get a better term for it, but, like, hey, that's that's what, I, that's what I've been hearing it called on Tumblr before by people that I follow, and that's what I call it. Because that's basically right. what it is. Alright, just avoid saying feminism is bad, because feminism is I'm not saying thing. feminism is bad, I'm saying white feminism is bad, but feminism right. it, right. by itself is good. All right, okay, this is gonna be, this is gonna get really bad. Okay, is yeah, should we talk about Pretty Rock for 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 Rennie? Okay, this one I guess is just okay. Uh, Rennie, okay. Pretty so, Rock is amazing. Drake is amazing. All right, is amazing. Hi. Uh, Taylor Swift is amazing. Marvin Gaye is amazing. Ariel is amazing. Deer Hunter is great. Amazing. Yeah, big fan of music. Although. You know, music, I do think it is a bit derivative of pavement. I really think a 6.8 is a really fair rating. That's my favorite onion article ever. It's just when Pittsburgh's, is, is especially when Pittsburgh's like, music is really just a derivative of pavement. It's like, oh, you know me so well. No, no, my my favorite is the one from Clickhole, which is like ISIS gave in the aeroplane or the sea, like a 6 out of Disgusting. 10. Disgusting. ISIS gives in the aeroplane over sea a 2 out of 5 stars. Hold on, I'm trying to, hold on, let me find the... Also, find... Maddie, you're, I just looked up white feminism. Turns out I was uninformed. I told you, see? Like, don't, don't, don't say you told me. I was uninformed. I wasn't part of that. Okay. So you're right. I can I see defeat. You were right. White feminism, if if it is what it, what I think it means, is probably not a good thing. I know, exactly. I, was, I, I, just, I couldn't really articulate that very well. Because it's like... I, I... Okay. 
Okay, also, I think my favorite onion headline is Beautiful Cinnamon Roll, Too Good for This World, Too Pure. <laughs> because that just has, that has a lot of value to it, because you can just keep it. It's, it's forever relevant. Okay, but yeah, that is, I guess, this week's podcast. Do we, do we want... I, I'm in the mood for a late night. Do you guys want to do a late night, like, right after we get done with this? Maybe. Maybe? Okay, hope you guys... All right, well... Po- what good uh, have a good time guys listen to the new empress of album it's great if you got this far have yeah. a good one guys next See week poison season we'll talk about the I'm next sorry i'm back Peace. bye oh, oh. Oh. you want to talk about fetty wap and real quick no no it's too late we already no said- i really can't oh my god <laughs> okay bye guys see ya bye